Right, hello everybody. Just thought I'd pop in for a little review for you today, and that's using some different watercolours. Now these were sent to me by a lady called Regina, and it's reginaswatercolour.com. Okay, I know that because it says it on the back of the card, but I've been conversing with her anyway. Reginaswatercolour.com, and she sent, very nicely, sent all these watercolours through to me from the US for me to have a play with, and kind of see how I get on with them. So as the watercolours, it says brush I'm using as well. So I thought I'll give it a go and I'll tell you a little bit about them. So it's a very quick review on my findings with them. So I'm, you know, I'm very honest as people who know me know me will know I'm very honest with my kind of reports and anything that I talk about. Okay, so what was my findings so far? I've done all this painting of the hummingbird using these paints, okay? So I thought I'll give it a try and do a complete painting using these, uh, these new paints. Now, the paints are called different names. So on this colour chart, okay, because what you have to get in the kit, I better tell you what you get in the kit first of all. You obviously get the paints, okay, you get a brush as well. It won't be this one, I don't think. It's a smaller brush with a little travel compact brush with slots inside there within the tin. But you get this little card as well. Now this card is usually blank when you get it, and you just kind of test your paints on for the appropriate colours as you go through. Okay, so that's your little colour swatch when you've done it and you've got that to kind of go by for what the colours are in, in the pans. I do find that obviously because it's such a highly concentrated pigment they look very dark in the pans but when you compare those two together side by side you see they're actually quite nice lovely kind of bright colours they all are. The difference is that obviously within the pans here they're very highly concentrated paints so because of that all it basically means is a lot of pigment in there there really is and the beauty about that is that they last a lot longer a lot of time and care has gone into getting the right kind of colours, the right kind of consistency, the creamy feel to them as well. And that's, I know, I understand that's been on the website, I'd look on there, done a lot of kind of research on these particular paints. So, Regina has hand moulded these, so basically what she's done, all it basically means is that she's got a glass table, she's got like a glass ball in her hand, and she'll grind the pigments to a very soft paste, with no particles hardly in there whatsoever so it gets very smooth to the consistency that she wants the paints to be and also to kind of get the colours right from the raw powder you know right from the raw uh, pigment itself now because it's also got honey with inside the paints as well that gives it that vibrancy those really kind of sharp clear bright colours as you can see here on my test card so that's what I like about these the colours are very bright and also the benefit as well. I'll just show you in a minute Let's just say, for example, let's go for that one, which is called Blueprint, okay? Now, this particular one, why is I out of space now? <laughs> Look how rich that is. I've only just got onto that. I've not wet it beforehand. That's the beauty about these paints. They're nearly to the consistency, a little bit thicker, um, as tube paint. So you haven't got to keep working it, working it, working it, as you would normally do with half pans, as I do. I mean, I've been using watercolour half pans for about 40 years now, you know, using the same ones, and... Uh, you know what it's like, you get used to the same thing, don't you? But when somebody sends you a kit like this, you've got to try it out and give it a go. So the beauty about this is that you've got the pigment straight away there. So there's none of this kind of messing about trying to get the, the colour works all ready to go. Now, the names are different, as you can see. So we've got Coal, which is like Payne's Grey. We've got Blueprint, we've got Delphinium, we've got Aqua. And you can choose whatever colours you want to call that near. I mean, you've got Cadmium Red, for example, which is Poppy. That's the kind of colour I'd say it looks like more than anything. Um, you've got Oral and Yellow, I would say that's sunflower for the Sunflower. Daffodil is like my Lemon Yellow, and so on. So you just compare it to the colours that you normally use, and you find within here, and um, those colours are very similar indeed. I think, for example, um, let's say, for example, Aquarium. I think that's similar to Phthalo Green. Delphinium, uh, Phthalo Blue. There's other colours as well which Regina's made herself, which I was just given unique names to. Uh, let's have a quick look. So, uh, violet, so look at that one. So that really is like a cobalt violet, okay? Uh, poppy, as I said, that's like a cadmium red, like a brilliant cadmium red. You got rose, like a deep red. You got fuchsia, fuchsia, I can't say that. Fuchsia, <laughs> which is like a quintessyndrome magenta sort of color, isn't it, on that one? Uh, sunflower, yeah, I'd say, yeah, it probably is like gambo, really, on something like that, really. Um, so you can go through these and you can kind of think, well actually that's quite similar to the other colours I have. As I say, coal is like, to me, like Payne's Grey, but also like a carbon black. 
and chocolate is like a Venetian brown and so on and so on and so on. So you can compare these to your own colours that you've got within your usual palette as well. But as I mentioned, the beauty about these is that they're very rich in colour, very rich in pigment. Um, they're made, as I said, with a base, um, the, the main binder is honey. Now, most watercolours, in probably all watercolours, have some form of a binder within them. And they tend to be things like, um, well, let's just say like corn syrup is one, which a lot of manufacturers use. But honey is an old-fashioned way that a lot of the old watercolours used to use when they made their own watercolour paints. And so honey is a nice way of getting the colours looking very bright and vibrant. I also understand that these paints are light fast as well. They're transparent, which is exactly what we need in watercolours. Okay, they're not toxic, they don't stink or anything like that. <laughs> don't give off a smell, you don't have to wear a mask when you wear, when you paint with them. They're also artist quality, and I can see that straight away. The quality of these are absolutely fantastic. You know, this, these are my findings so far. You can see what I've done so far. And they're also safe for children, apparently, as well, according to Regina's website. So they are safe for children to have a go with as well. But um, as I say, you can see the colour of that. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Isn't that nice? And this photograph will give you some ideas as well, the kind of quantity of things that you get within this Ultimate Palette gift set. Try seeing that with very few. <laughs> as I say, they are handmade and they're made with a raw pigment, with a kind of addition of honey, Arabic gum, also ox gal, uh, glove oil, that kind of thing kind of mixed in to get the consistency and the colours, which you can see here. Right, continue painting, Paul. Let's have a quick play, shall we? And I'll tell you a little bit more while I'm painting. Now, I've got to carry on using this brush. It's a little bit big for me, this particular brush. I tend to work with my usual one here, which is a size double zero from Windsor & Newton. But I thought I'd give it a try. And I thought, well, you know, it's going to be similar to this. And if it's synthetic like this one is, I think this uh, Taclon, I think it is, the, the manufacturer, something like that anyway. But I do find synthetic brushes, like my double zero is synthetic as well. So they do have good tips. As well, and you can actually get, to show you on this one here, look, a very fine point to begin with, just <laughs> two airs in air, and then apply the pressure and come off the pressure, and you've got a nice kind of thin and thick and thin line. So that's the kind of control you got over something like this. So yeah, quite impressive, I must admit. So I'm just kind of build these up as I go along, I'm trying to build up the black. Now you know with all colours as well that Every layer will get darker and darker and darker. And the beauty about this is that because it's on glass as well, which is very similar to the, if not the same, as the cos cosmetic mirrors that you find, you know, that's that type of thing, is that when it dries as well, you can see this is all dry here. Now, this is a mixture for a member of Poppy, um, Sunflower, and I think it was Rose to mix into this colour. But when you look at how, how dark that is there when it's dry, that will give you some idea on when it's on glass. What it would be like in one layer of paint, two layers of paint roughly, and really thick layers. So the idea would be is that if I put say three or four layers of paint on, that's the kind of colour that we'll get. Really dark, kind of deep colour. And you can see the same thing with the blue and how that works as well. So that's how these this, this kind of mixing palette works. It gives you an idea, an indication. If you use this colour five or six times over, whatever it might be, that's the kind of depth of colour you'll end up with using the same colour time and time again over the same lines. So it gives us some ideas how it would look as a graduation of that same colour. Now, what I did like about this, which is something unique, I've never seen this before actually, is that the base on this is magnetic. So when these arrive to you, when you first get them in, in the box, these are all stuck down onto a sticky backed kind of card. And you can flex that card and very carefully pop them off one by one and they just magnetise because they're metal backed to the tray, as you can see. So the idea is that you can kind of form your own colour palette if you wanted to. I mean, you do get this card, as I mentioned, which you're filling yourself. It's already got the names already printed on there as well, which is what I've already done. But also you get these blanks as well. So that means if you want to make a combination of colours from the colours that you've got, say you want to add two or three colours together and mix them, you can put them into there and keep them safe there for when you want to use it again. So it's quite a handy thing that you can have. Also, when you get the kit, if you do buy this this uh, this kit as well, you find within the kit, there's usually, as I say, this brush, not this particular one, but one similar to that, which slots into here. The brush in question, I think, is a retractable brush, or I think it's just one like this one, where you can just pop it back in its case, and you've got it ready to use again. But that won't go in there, that particular one. But say the one that you get with the kit, 
does go in there. So that gives you some ideas what the actual main kit consists of. So you've got a row of 20 paints, um, which is their selected colours, and well, you've seen the quality of them already. They're really, really vibrant and high in pigmentation, which is exactly what you want. You find as well they are very sticky to touch. I won't touch it too much, I'm going to pull the paint off. But they are very sticky as well. But that's because you've got the opposite of the honey within there, which you can smell those as well. It's got a pleasant smell. Um, because the honey's in there, and also because of the fact it's very highly concentrated uh, paints. Now, when you first get these, what you need to do is put them in the fridge, believe it or not, honestly, for about one to two hours, just kind of cool them down. Because during transit, when the, the um, delivery vans or anything like that, especially if you're on an airplane, they can get really warm as well, which means that these will, these will soften up. So when you take the, the plastic cover off, you have to make sure that the plastic cover comes off in one fell swoop and doesn't take the paints with it. So to do that, just pop them in the fridge for one or two hours and you won't have any problem with that then. So that will give you some ideas about the main kit. Within the paints, you also get, look at this, that smart little kind of cloth bag. Very, very nice. Kind of pull type bag, which is lovely to kind of get with that as well. I do keep them in there. So this is the first time I've had to play with these today, so I thought I'd give a quick go. And you get some watercolour paper as well, okay? Now, this watercolour pad, it's actually a block pad. Now, this one here, which is um, a different one, this is blocking for use normally. This one is Strathmore, so it's a really good quality paper as well. I mean, I do know of Strathmore. And you get what's called a, well, it's a guitar pick, really. You get one of these, and the idea with all these block pads, like the ones I've used for years, is that there's a gap at the top there, look. So the idea would be you slide this little guitar pick between the sheets and there and then slide it all the way around. Keep it level though. So keep it level, don't kind of try and do it at an angle. Just go in probably about, I don't know, so two eighths of an inch, something like that, around all the way around the edge and then that sheet of paper just pops off and you can have got a clean piece of paper ready for your next painting project. So that comes with the kit as well, so really smart. And it comes in, if we can get the lid off, bear with me a minute, a presentation box. If you can get, I can't get that off, bear with me. I'm all fingers and thumbs today, sorry about that. So you get this nice kind of presentation box here as well, which it all comes in as part of the kit. And when this arrived as well, I've already done an unboxing video on this. It's fantastic, the way that she wraps everything up. It's professionally parceled up with ribbon all tied in a little bow uh, from different layers. Even the brush was parceled up with ribbon as well. So I must admit that with Gina's watercolors.com, um, for a one person business, which is what she is, these are fantastic. She's put a lot of time and effort into these paints. And you can see what I've produced today. I've been sat here painting away off camera. And you can see how I've kind of go ahead, gone ahead and just gone on with these paints like this lot. Mix them up. Just get my colour chart out of the way a minute. There you go. Is that better? You can just see that by the beak. <laughs> Mix them up. So this is a cold black. Okay. And you can really kind of add that colour in. And remember, every layer that you add of the same colour, the same same shade, will get darker and darker and deeper in colour. For example, you know when I did the um, the chest on this, so that was a mixture of the sunflower and the poppy to begin with. Then a little bit of rose kind of added into there as well. And again, you know, so easy to kind of work with because of the simple fact is, every layer gets darker. So I'll give you an example there. Look. Always wash your brush out in between colours. So I'm going to put that down there. Okay. So that is a sunflower, which is very similar to Gambo. If you remember the Gambo colour. And this particular one is Poppy. Let's get a bit more water. So you don't need to work on, that's it. Look at this. That is rich as anything. That's too much now, look. I've got far too much on there. That's nearly there, let's get a little bit more. I shouldn't be using my double zero brush and mixing to be honest with you, should I? Somebody tell me off please, put it in the comments down below. And this is a colour of use for the body of this uh, hummingbird. And you can see how quick I mix that because I don't have to kind of work the paints up or anything like that. Just, and that's with a double zero brush as well. If you do that with this bigger brush, then you do it in seconds, literally seconds. And the beauty about this as well I found is that to clean it, you just wipe it with a damp cloth. That's it. You could use tissue paper, so I could get a piece of kitchen roll, which I, which I use here for lifting off, and just, wa just wet it and then just wipe it all off which is the beauty of it. But what I'd suggest you do, instead of using kitchen roll, is use a little bit of, um, I don't know, like a, like a flannel, a damp flannel, have a couple of them, 
So you've got a spare, and, and that way you can just simply rewash it, wash your flannel out in the sink, and you've got it, you can use it again. You know, it's as simple as that, rather than just keep wasting kitchen roll all the time. So just a little tip for you. Also, when you put these, one thing I did find um, with these, when you first put them into the into the tray, because remember these all come on on a um, a sticky card which is bendable. You just take them off carefully with a palette knife. So even you can use your like a guitar pick or whatever to kind of very gently lift them off carefully. You don't want them flying across the room and sticking to the wall. Okay. But the beauty about them as well is that when you've got them in there, they're very moment to go. But I made the mistake by having it that way around first. And the problem I had there is that when I went to mix some paint, like so, guess what I was doing wrong? Any ideas? I was putting my hand, so I've got paint on there. I was putting my hand on the paint, so I was going, oh, no, no, again. You know, because of really high pigmentations, I say, and they are sticky. So I thought, no, we can't be doing that. So when you do this, I'd recommend that you have it that way around. The bone of mine, I'm left-handed, okay? So obviously I have it on the other side of your painting surface. Have it that way around, at least that way, you're not putting your hand in the paints. Yes, you might put it in the tray, but I'd rather have the tray stick to my hand than all them paints, okay? So just a little bit of a tip for you. Another thing you want to be careful of as well, which I don't do, is if you want the paint to be really thick, nearly as thick as what it's in in these pans here, then you find it will be still be a little bit tacky on the watercolour paper, okay? So if you add it really, really thick off there and put it onto here, one, it could give a shine to it, but it could also be quite tacky, which means it'll never dry, not fully, because it'll have a bit of a tack to it. However, traditionally watercolours are used loose, as you can see like this, you know, so you can just work with them like that. You can go thicker if you want to. You can go really thick. Let's get a little bit more pigment. All right, let's go even thicker. So you can go as thick as that if you want to. It's not a problem at all. It's when you go really, really thick and, you know, you put a big, thick dollop on there. That's when you find it'll still be a little bit tacky kind of touch. So other than that, these are lovely paints. I would recommend as I say, have a play with these on some test paper first, like I've done here. Look, I've got loads of bits of test paper knocking about. Well, I've tried the colours out on purpose, or even the colour of the greens there, look, to the other side. Make little reference notes of what colour goes where and what they are. And also, have a look at your own paints, the ones you would normally use, and compare the colours to the ones you've got. So when you make your colour chart like this here, have a look on your own paints. I've got Winston Newton, so I can compare this to Winston Newton. I can compare it to other brands as well. So for example, something like the Fuchsia, that's gonna be something similar to like Quintus Indra and Magenta. Uh, for example, the Rose, where's Rose? There we go, there's Rose. It's gonna be like a deep red, okay? So deep red rose, sort of, sort of color. It's gonna be like a brilliant cadmium red, the Sunflower, that's gonna be like a Gambo. The Daffodil and so on could be like a yellow light for Hansen. Um, so really, for the kind of the ultimate palette gift set, this I would recommend. Okay, and that's my honest opinion as an artist, and you can see the beauty of doing something like this. Say, so, so easy to use as well. And that's also the thing about watercolor as well is that they don't take up a lot of space, and because it's all compact within this one tin, brilliant, ideal quality, color, light fastness, increased smoothness, preservative, brilliance of color. <laughs> longevity of colour, there's all sorts of things which are brilliant on this. So um, so yeah, I would recommend that uh, for a travel kit, even the kit you use at home for something which is nice and compact, I would recommend it, okay? So until the next thing we do, I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually, I've got an idea. How's about this? The next painting I'm going to do, I'm going to do a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to paint a bird, for example, it might be a bird. And not decided what yet. I've been thinking about this. And I'm going to use Regina's watercolor.com, her paints, for doing that with. And that step by step video tutorial will be for you to watch and for you to have a play with. You'll have access to the reference photo and the outline drawing as well. Right, okay, so there you go. That gives us some ideas. So, my honest review uh, for using Regina's watercolor paints from Regina's watercolor.com. Watercolor spelt the American way, by the way, not the English way. Not the UK way. <laughs> okay, so Regina's watercolor.com. I'll put a link down below for you. And let me know what you think as well if you do get some because I'm quite interested to hear from you. And until next time around, I'm going to say goodbye for now. And uh, the next ones I say will be a full-fledged video tutorial just for you to have a go at. Until then, bye-bye for now. 
Now don't forget my members on Patreon have got exclusive access to my online video tutorials and ready for you to have a go at. Now if you fancy having a go at one of my watercolour lessons for free, I've got one on there just for you on how to paint a robin in watercolour. Now if you enjoyed this video, please click on subscribe down below. Click on become a patron and I'll see you there.